Hello, this video is the first in a series on Figma basics. In this video, we're going to talk about frames and how they are similar to and different to artboards in Illustrator and InDesign. Okay, so here we have a completely empty, brand new Figma project. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just name this frames demo. Um, and so frames are a very kind of fundamental tool in how Figma works. Um, so to create them right over here, to, it's also the F key, you click on this and it creates basically a box. And these are very similar to artboards and that I can alt drag and change them. I can grab their proportions from the corners and make them different sizes. And so that is very, very similar to artboards in Illustrator. So, so far, so good. But where they differ is that frames track the relationship of the content within the frame to the frame, which does not happen in InDesign or Illustrator. So for example, if I have some text on here, a little bigger. If this was in Illustrator, you can move it around and the text goes with it. However, if I was to do this, the text is maintaining the distance to the left part of the frame. And it's also maintaining its distance to the top. Uh, if I move the corner, nothing's happening. So, so that is something very different than how it would be in Illustrator. So here I have a frame in Illustrator. And if I put some text, make it a little bigger. When I go to my artboards here and change the size, well, when I move the artboard, the text goes with it. But when I change this corner over here, the text stays positioned to where it is in the global kind of space there. So here back in Figma, we can take another look at what's happening. So if I select my text, and I'm zooming in here, we see that there's these dotted lines that are connecting to the edges. And these are called constraints. And constraints are the first way that we can start creating responsive layouts in Figma. So for example, if this was the site title, make it a little smaller, duplicate it, call this navigation. So right now, this navigation is the dotted line is going over to here, but we can control that. And that's what this little thing is over here, right? So you see that these are a little darker blue. If I make it like this and I put my type over here. Now, when I change my frame, I'm effectively making a responsive layout. I'm creating a relationship between the position of the type and, and the margin of the frame. There's, you know, I can align it to the bottom too. So I have these tools over here. So now it's the bottom corner that is that relationship. But this is what makes, or one of the things that makes Figma different than InDesign and Illustrator. So if I put something different than text, so let's just put a star over here. We have this other possibility, so we can, we can constrain to the left, right, top, center of things, but we can also do this. So now when this sizes, the star is going to grow. Um, and right now it's just growing on the Y axis, but we can set both of these to 
the scale. And now the navigation's gonna stick to the to the bottom, and as I make the frame bigger, the star will grow. So that's one thing that's different about frames. Another thing that's different is how frames are ordered. So let's let's just make a few here. Add a bunch and I'll add some text. And we'll put this text in the middle. Center, center. Okay, so here I have some text. I'll center it in the frame. Okay. Uh, well, while we're at it, another thing that's different about InDesign and Illustrator is you can paste to multiple frames simultaneously. Also, when you paste in Figma, instead of going to the middle of the viewport, it goes to the, to the same position as it was in the frame you're pasting from. So now if I paste, it pastes all these text boxes right in the middle, which is really great, actually. I don't know why. It's not like this in other software. Anyway, now I got these six frames here. So in InDesign, the order is from top to bottom. And in Illustrator, the order is however the frames are in, sorry, however the artboards are in the artboard panel. So let me open that up, window. So in InDesign, it's top to bottom. In Illustrator, it's the order of the artboards, regardless of where they are um, in the bigger kind of space here. In Figma, how it works is it goes from left to right and then from top to bottom, much like how we read text. So if I hit play here, it should go one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And I can go back to the original. It doesn't go, you know, if I put the two over here, doesn't go like this. So now it's going to go one, three, two, five, six, four. Right? And it doesn't have anything to do with the order you create them in. It's all horizontal first and then rows down further. That can be a little hard to keep track of when we're creating stuff. I mean, we have this visual layout, which is great, but see all the numbers of the frames are not reflecting that reality of one, two, three, four. So something I like that's an indispensable tool is a plugin. So let's let's grab this and we're gonna go plugins, manage plugins, and I'm looking for something called super tidy. And I have it installed. And so then I'm going to right click plugins, super tidy, tidy, run custom. And so what Super Tidy does is it um, aligns them in rows and columns. It assigns their number based on where they are in position. And it also reorders these layers to reflect the sequence in the artboard space. So I, this is like an indispensable plugin for me. And it's so great. So row zero, 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 zero one. Row one. 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4. And then we see that also reflected over here. So that's the basics of frames. We're going to talk a lot more about them as we move forward. Actually, I want to talk about one more thing. So right now, these numbers are constrained to the upper left corner. I can temporarily disable that by holding down Command. And that effectively turns it back into like a, a an illustrator kind of artboard. It, it temporarily turns off the, um, the constraints. Um, another thing you might be wondering is what if I wanted to temporarily scale this? Right now it's just 
you know, it's just sticking to the corner and I can turn that off and I can override it. But what if I wanted to scale this? So that's where we go. I'm going to go over here to the scale key, which is K. And that lets us resize artboards um, as if they're complete artwork and scale everything that's in there. So those are really handy overrides. The control click to temporarily disable constraints and K to scale content that has some kind of um, relationship. If you want to just scale it, you can, you can go into that mode. Okay.